are you beautiful? Think about it. It's a simple question. Are you beautiful? Most women, the answer is no. Dove's research found only 4% of women self-identify as beautiful. How could that possibly be? The images presented to us are not real. They're manufactured. And who does this serve? The beauty industry. They're here to help you spend your money. They're here to help you fix it. They're here to help you fit in. As the magazine covers say, look a decade younger. Your weight, minus eight. <laughs> Lose the five, fix the flab. And my personal favorite, so you ate a cupcake. Fast moves to burn it off. This is what our average magazine stand looks like. And it's working. We spend more on beauty than on education. And that's just beauty. That's not to mention fashion. Combined, they're a $1.3 trillion industry who've made a business out of setting unreal expectations of beauty and then profiting and exploiting the insecurities that they've helped create. The business of beauty is ugly. Growing up, I always felt left out. I never feel like I fit the mold. And this always left me devastated. My middle school kept back, back issues of every fashion magazine, and I loved running to the library every day after school. I loved flipping through the glossy pages. But after a while, I noticed I didn't look like those girls. Not her, not her, not her. Kind of like her, not, not her. I kept looking, looking, looking. I didn't see myself reflected. My crazy curly hair, my freckles, my curves, my, my big ears, they weren't there, not there, not in, not beautiful. So what did I do? What the magazines told me to do, of course. I bowed down to the beauty Bibles, started chemically straightening my hair, which is just as terrible as it sounds. Four hours in a hair salon with chemicals on my scalp burning retraining the cuticle of my hair to be beautiful. And my hair after one of these episodes was so beautiful that it started falling out in clumps. <laughs> that was interesting. And then I started just hating myself. I started hating my skin color, my thighs. I even started walking sideways on my mom's treadmill, thinking that would do something about it. <laughs> The thin thigh plan was ill-conceived and definitely not necessary when I look back on it. So why am I telling you all of this? Women not feeling beautiful has huge, dangerous, echoing effects on our society. Eight out of 10 women opt out of important life events when they don't feel beautiful. Not feeling beautiful means not feeling powerful. Eight out of 10 young girls self-select themselves out of sports, activities, or even raising their hand in class because they don't want to draw attention to the way they look. This affects every aspect of our society. So when I first left advertising to start my fashion line, Early in my career, I was asked to style a hair show in New Jersey. Yes, a foot in the door. My first brush with the beauty industry. I showed up at this hair show. I was at a huge convention center. I was lost, I didn't know where to go, I didn't know what to do. I was looking for the runway. Finally found it. I was introduced to my team. Hair, makeup, stylist, models. One of my models was getting her hair done and she looked young, extraordinarily young. She was getting her hair done and uh, I asked her, uh, she was scribbling furiously on a notepad. I said, 
What, what are you working on? My algebra homework. Your model in this show? Uh-huh. How old are you? 12. Oh my God. <laughs> she was 12, working on her algebra homework. But after they did her hair and her makeup, and I begrudgingly styled and dressed her, or after I reluctantly styled and dressed her, she looked like she was literally 30. And that was the moment that I realized that this is so often the image being portrayed to us. And this is the unrealistic standard of beauty that we are often being held to. And this is what I call the beauty gap, where it is no longer about illusion and it is closer to delusion. A one-dimensional view and standard of beauty that is, that is provided through manipulation, smoke, lighting, mirrors. The beauty gap is the space in between the unrealistic standards of beauty that we are being provided and where our true beauty actually lies. What's in between is unrealistic images, images that actually don't exist in real life. What's in between extreme Photoshop, body doubles, underage models being marketed to women. Let me give you a few examples. Recently, a famous 70-something celebrity was photographed for the cover of a big magazine. The photo shoot went off, and images were brought back to the editor. She took a look at them. Mm -mm. These won't do. Her legs look too old. Yeah, she's in her 70s. Uh, so the only solution, because they were beyond Photoshop's repair, a leg double. A younger leg model was called in, photographed, and her legs were superimposed over the stars for the cover, deceiving everyone who walked by, and certainly deceiving my mother, who doubled down on Pilates after seeing the article. <laughs> this is common in fashion. It's called Frankenstein Photoshop, using one model's legs or uh, arms on another. And what this suggests to us is that we're not beautiful as a whole, not even the woman on the cover of the magazine. And this delusion follows us into video. We know photos have been manipulated for, for decades now. But did you know that video has these same Photoshop-like tools? Frame by frame, you can edit a video, and we do. Removing wrinkles, under eye circles, removing inches. We've already seen this go wrong. Recently, a famous singer had to have her team remove a video because her editing team had removed three inches from her waist and lengthened her legs. And usually, we wouldn't even notice. But the two videos side by side make it painfully obvious. This beauty gap usually slips by, and we just think this is beauty. But this time, it got caught. And these days, it even follows us on social media. Even the most personal of photos now might not be real with image editing apps readily available. One of the top paid apps in 80 countries is called Facetune. Facetune's motto, don't wait for the perfect photo, Facetune it. Facetune, does your friend look, have a banging body on the beach? So do I in this photo. <laughs> Boom, 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 boom. On, on Facebook and Instagram, take your feed with a grain of salt. Even celebrities admit that they often use apps like these before they post. So the point of all this is, this delusion is not the exception, it's the rule. 99% of advertising images are retouched. 
The altering of these images alters our minds. And these images don't exist in the real world. When I worked in advertising, I could never find clothes I wanted to wear to work. I never found things that felt like me, that felt like they fit. So I left my job and started my own clothing line, Carrie Hammer. <laughs> I want to start a clothing line for professional women to provide clothes that felt powerful, beautiful, feminine, professional. When it came time to launch my brand at New York Fashion Week in 2014, I didn't feel comfortable sending traditional mo models down the runway. My clients are professional women, role models. I thought about it long and hard. And then I had a huge revelation. For my runway during New York Fashion Week, we would be doing role models, not runway models. So I called up 25 of my role model clients. I said, hey, want to walk the runway during New York Fashion Week? And I found out the answer to that question is a really quick, oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> That first show, we had CEOs, executives, uh, philanthropists, activists, some of the most amazing women. And as you can see here, their beauty exuded because it was true. It came from their passion, their purpose, their accomplishments. They didn't have to fake it. They were the real deal. In that first show, one of our role models is a famous doctor and sex therapist. She rocked that runway. She just happens to be in a wheelchair. Dr. Danielle Shapuck is a great client, good friend of mine, and she has never been defined by her disability. Like my curly hair does not define me. But we found out later that that was a landmark moment because she was the first ever model on the runway during New York Fashion Week that happened to be in a wheelchair. And it went all around the world. As the news outlet outlets caught fire, emails poured into Danielle and I, saying, thank you, I've never felt beautiful. I've never seen myself reflected on the runway. I want to model now. I'll read you one email that particularly touched me. Hi, Carrie. My name is Karen, and I'm 30 years old, living in Los Angeles. I read an article about your fashion show, which showcased Danielle Shapuck. Seeing her on that runway made me teary-eyed because it boosted my self-confidence, something I had lacked prior. I was so thrilled and moved that a designer welcomed someone with a disability on the runway. You don't see that and I hope it opens doors for people with disabilities. Beauty comes in all shapes and sizes. There's absolutely no right or wrong. Two years ago, I contracted bacterial meningitis, and in order to save my life, doctors had to amputate all four of my limbs. I'm now using my life using prosthetic arms and legs for independence. I still have a hard time dealing with my appearance, I used to have so much self-confidence, but lately I've been afraid to accept myself. I have a passion for fashion, so hopefully one day I get to show the world why can't people with disabilities like me be beautiful and model. Thank you for being such a wonderful inspiration. Take care, Karen. This was just one email out of hundreds, and it was emails like this that made me realize that this was role models, not runway models, was so much more than just the runway. This was changing people's lives. We had gone viral. That's the holy grail in advertising. Brands always try to aspire to do that. But what they forget is to go viral, you have to be a carrier cell for something greater, for something bigger, for something positive. While my carrier cell is my fashion brand, what I do is empower women, change the global definition of beauty, and close the beauty gap. But I'm just one emerging designer, launching in a sea of images. But it started a movement, and I call it 
the runway revolution. And it's catching on. There have now been more than 30 brands that have included diverse models in their shows and their advertisements. Yeah. Well, <laughs> the likes of Target, Anthropology, Uniqlo, The Limited, and even the Queen Bee herself, Beyonce. So you know we've made it. <laughs> Combined, these have multi-billion dollar media spends. Combined, we can shift the beauty gap. The runway revolution is about showing women you don't have to be one size, one shape, one color, one ability to be beautiful. Beauty is in every single woman. It's actually been staring us in the face this whole time. Be you. Be beautiful. Beauty lies in what we do in the world, not what we look like. Beauty is in our individuality, in our differences. Beauty lies in our passion, our purpose, our accomplishments. Beauty lies in role models, not runway models. So what do we do about it? Be a role model. Be a role model for somebody in your life. All of us are. Lead by positive example and show what true individualistic beauty looks like. We vote with our dollar. And right now, we vote for beauty over education. Let's spend more on ourselves, less on our selfies. <laughs> Today, I call for a new beauty constitution for the runway revolution. We, the people, have the power to change the rules. Let's vote for brands that empower women. No more extreme Photoshop, no body doubles, no underage women marketing, no underage girls marketing to women. The business of beauty is ugly, but it doesn't have to be. It's possible to make impossible beauty a thing of the past, but only if we demand it. To make sure the industry and brands, to make sure that the industry and brands hear you, share this message with your peers, your friends, your sisters, your daughters. In an industry that loves a good makeover, it's time to give ourselves one. Thank you very much.